Good evening and welcome to the May 6th Pitt County Commissioner's meeting. I'm going to call our meeting to order. If we would, let's have roll call. If you would, stand with me for the invocation. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and mercy and grace. Thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, give us wisdom and strength, Lord, as we make decisions that are best for our county. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We want to invite Jade Ham up to lead us in the pledge. If you would, come up and introduce yourself. Good evening. Good evening. I am Jade Ham. I'm a junior at the Pitt County Schools Early College High School, and I'm currently the student body vice pre well, I'm the student body president for our Student Government Association. Thank you for having me this evening. At this time, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank, Thank you, Jay. and have a good evening. Thank you very much. I entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So, second. Got a motion and a second. Okay, Madam Manager, we have any public addresses? You have one signed up to speak, Henry Andrews, and as he's coming forward, if the attorney would read the statement. Pitt County welcomes all comments on matters of public concern. Each speaker will be allowed up to three minutes to speak. A total of 30 minutes is set aside for public addresses to the board. Please state your name and address prior to speaking. Uh, Henry Andrews, Jr. I live at 2305 Bells Fort Road, Pitt County. Um, I have a couple questions. One thing I'd like to do. When my time runs out, if you could do a favor for me, and you have to ring the bell. Let Mr. Colson, uh, Commissioner Colson, do that because I've called him a few times, and I'm sure he would have loved to say your time has run out. <laughs> so, <laughs> with that being said, uh, I don't know if I can the mic cover. over a little bit. Uh, with that being said, <laughs> turn it oh, you. There you go. Okay. With that being said, I don't know that I could get everything in that I wanted to get in, but well, I'll try to do as quick as I can. I'm not real happy with the after Christmas greeting card that I got from the Pitt County Tax Office. I don't know many people that are. Uh, I'm not going to talk about anything but my home, and I feel like if I spend somewhere around fifty-five dollars or $65,000, I might get it up to where the price could be, where it could be sold for that price. Um, I have not had a professional appraiser do it because I know my house better than anybody can go out there and do it, and I'm being honest with you. Uh, I've did an improper, Mr. Colson, Commissioner Colson will tell you, I love to talk. I've done improper uh, interviews with people at the gas station, at the convenience stores, grocery stores, whatever. I could bring up the, prop, the property tax issue. And to the every person that I talk with had an opinion. After about 35 interviews, maybe five or six said, I'm a rental person, so it doesn't bother me. Well, we know better. But, uh, out of, you know, I would say 25 of them were completely upset, astounded, surprised, could not figure out how a number like that could be, could be put on their property. And others were said, well, we expected to rise. It was about what they expected. Um, I even had one guy that lived in Lenore County just south of Grifton, and he said he didn't know his property was worth so much till he got his tax notice from Pitt County. So uh, with that being said, what I would like for you to do is to try to figure out what you, this is a big impact on me and a lot of other tax property owners. Uh, I happen to own more than my house, I, a business downtown that I just recently closed. Uh, I thought I was going to retire, but I might have to go back and go back to work so I can pay my tax. But uh, I would like to, for you to explore every uh, every way you can to try to get this from being such a large, huge impact all at once. I, I'm not sure. You guys are on that side of the fence. I'm on this side of the fence. Maybe a, prop, uh, a sales tax increase or somewhat to spread the joy around a little bit and give those property owners a break. I don't know. I don't. You know what you can do, and I don't know what you can do. I'm just asking you to help the property owners because I know your expenses are high, but our expenses are high also. <coughs> You know, we've got the inflation, we've got the high light bills, we've got the high grocery, we've got the high gases. 
I don't have any children in school, but the people that do have children in school, I guess that's uh he, he had an opportunity. I was gonna give him a second to <laughs> tell. Just say it, Tom. I know you want <laughs> say it. <laughs> But anyway, I thank you for this time, and uh, maybe uh, if you guys could help out us poor taxpayers a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. We're going to be working on that this week. And one more thing, Mark. It's been a long time since we were playing Pee Wee Ball. Yes, sir. It has been. <laughs> Good to see you. You take care. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll move on to our two presentations. We'll go down front for a proclam proclamation, and if Lauren Smith would come forward. We don't. Okay. It is my pleasure this evening to read a proclamation recognizing May 2024 as Neurofibromatosis Awareness Month. This is a medical condition that I was not familiar with before one of our own employees uh, brought it to our attention and brought this month to our attention and asked if the board would recognize it and within the chair's discretion um, he signed this proclamation and it reads whereas Pitt County is observing May 2024 as Neurofibromatosis Awareness Month to educate the public about this rare genetic condition and whereas although over 4 million people around the world are living with neurofibromatosis and one in every 2,000 births is diagnosed with neurofibromatosis it is still relatively unknown to the public. And whereas neurofibromatosis affects all populations equally, regardless of race, ethnicity, or gender, and whereas neurofibromatosis causes tumors to grow on nerves throughout the body, and also can affect development of the brain, cardiovascular system, bones, and skin. And whereas the disorder can lead to blindness, deafness, bone abnormalities, disfigurement, learning disabilities, disabling pain, and cancer. And whereas the Children's Tumor Foundation leads efforts to promote and financially sponsor world-class medical research aimed at finding effective treatments and ultimately a cure. And whereas the Children's Tumor Foundation is actively fostering collaborative partnerships in both the science and industry to speed the drug research and development process through a number of consortia. And whereas the Children's Tumor Foundation works to improve access to quality patient health care through its national clinic network. And whereas the Children's Tumor Foundation provides patient and family support through its information resources, youth programs, and local chapter activities. And whereas much remains to be done in raising public awareness of neurofibromatosis to help promote early diagnosis, proper management and treatment, prevention of complications, and support for research. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Pitt County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim the month of May 2024 to be designated as Neurofibromatosis Awareness Month in Pitt County and commend its observance to all county rec residents in recognition of this important initiative and in honor of one of our very own. Adopted this the sixth day of May 2024, signed by Mark C. Smith, Chairman, attested by Kimberly Hines, Clerk to the Board, if you would present this for Warren to accept. On behalf of the board, we're happy to make awareness of this disease. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Bless you on your courage. Right around Let's do it. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> okay. Let me see if this does go. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Chairman and the board, the next item on your agenda is the presentation of the proposed 2024-2025 budget. Um, and it'll take us a little bit of time to get through these slides, but several of you asked for a little more detail than we've had in years past, and so this presentation um, aims to do that. I want to start by thanking you for the opportunity to present a proposed balanced budget for fiscal year 24-25. Preparing this budget is one of the most important things that we do each year. It's an honor to do this work for you, 
for our incredible workforce and for the residents of Pitt County, and I'm grateful that I get to do so. This is your budget, though. So after listening to what I'm proposing this evening, you'll have the opportunity in workshops this week to delve deeper into the details, ask questions, discuss, and direct any modifications to the proposal until you are completely satisfied as a board. This was a challenging budget in a reappraisal year. And as the budget team spent many hours analyzing and crunching numbers, the theme that rose to the top this year for me was balance. In the reappraisal this year, the focus was more than on balancing revenues with expenditures. In this reappraisal year, it was about balancing the highest property tax, property value increase with the largest property tax rate decrease that you will see. It's on balancing the costs associated with the needs and expectations of our growing community against minimizing the burden on our residents to cover those costs. I believe that this proposed budget finds that sweet spot to achieve what I think is the theme of this year's budget to achieve that balance. It does so while honoring the objectives um, that this board has set. And those objectives are to fund in accordance with this board's priorities, to continue our focus on employee recruitment and retention, to meet departmental needs, respect budget drivers, mitigate the tax impact of reappraisal on our residents, and achieve balance. And we did that through a fairly simple methodology. This budget was a challenging budget, but we approached it in a fairly simple and methodical way. Um, we projected revenues by looking at historical data, trends, and current market data, and we projected the revenue. We only allowed expenditures in your budget that were sufficiently justified with consideration given to prior spend history. We had one-on-one -on -one meetings with every department and agency that we fund where we listened to help understand the priorities and needs of each department. As a team, we did a line-by-line -line review in every fund in this budget. We then determined the lowest cost to efficiently and effectively operate Pitt County government so that we can achieve our mission. And then we determined the lowest tax rate necessary to generate the revenue to cover that cost. <coughs> Time consuming, but not a difficult process. So just a quick review of your priorities as we adopted them in January of this year at your capital improvement workshop. Education and public safety have always been and remain your number one and number two priorities, followed by human services, which includes public health and social services, then facility and space needs, recreation, economic development, and infrastructure. You'll see shortly that the proposed budget tonight prioritizes spending in this order so that the biggest piece of your budget pie goes to education. The next biggest piece of your pie goes to public safety, the next biggest to human services, and so on. Because, I don't know if you all know the late James Frick, Vice President of Notre Dame University, he said, don't tell me what your priorities are, show me where you spend your money and I'll tell you what they are. Right? It has to match. And funding these priorities are impacted by what we refer to or what we call budget drivers, right? The budget drivers create context for your budget and they have a significant influence on how the funds come in and where the funds go. They tie our hands, so to speak, in creating the total budget. The first two drivers on this slide impact your revenue. Reappraisal provides an opportunity for increased ad valorem taxes. And, de um, and the decreases in existing revenues that we've relied upon in the past. So we've got one revenue driver that gives you some potential to increase and another that's taking away revenues. Um, and I'll give you some examples of those. Some of the examples that are listed on your screen are Medicaid Hold Harmless. Um, some of you may remember what Medicaid Hold Harmless is. Back in 2007, there was a swap. They called it the Medicaid swap. And the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners helped counties to negotiate a deal with the state whereby Medicaid costs that were traditionally 
shared between the state and federal government and charged 15% to the counties at a variable rate that was difficult on county budgets, they swapped that with us. And now the state pays its entire share without contribution from the county, but in exchange, in swap, they took Article 44 sales tax. Um, rural counties were dis disproportionately burdened by Medicaid payments, and so that swap was very beneficial, especially to us in Pitt County and other rural counties. So in 2007, that deal was struck. We were relieved of Medicaid payments. The state kept our Article 44 taxes. But to be sure it wasn't a bad deal for us, the deal said that if sales tax kept by the state was greater than the Medicaid cost by the state, then that extra money would come back to the county. That difference would come back to the county. Well, since that time, since 2007, we have consistently received a good chunk of money back in um, Medicaid hold harmless money. Our highest number, I think, was about $4 million one year, meaning they collected $4 million in sales tax more than they paid in Medicaid, and so that money came back to the county. And if you look at historical trends, you can see a chart where that Medicaid hold harmless money was as high as $4 million, consistently around 2.8, 3.3, 3.5 in that area. And so we've relied on that revenue in budgeting over the last decade. Um, we this year, this past year, budgeted 3.5 million because we've realized that amount each year through historical trends. Um, well, sale, Article 44 sales tax has flattened and Medicaid costs have increased and that payment isn't, that excess isn't there anymore. So hearing from subject matter experts at the state, the School of Government, the Association of County Commissioners, um, they are recommending that we do not budget for any hold harmless payment this year. Um, this year we budgeted 3.5 million and we only got 300,000. So that's about a $3 million hit to the budget that we can't count as a recurring revenue this year. To do so based on the <coughs> historical trend would be irresponsible. So we've brought that number way, way down. Um, similarly, um, in terms of decreased fees that fund our budget traditionally. The Register of Deeds, her projected revenues, her excise taxes, there isn't the amount of activity in real estate transactions that she has experienced over the last five years. She's projecting to collect about a half a million dollars less in revenue than she collected last year. That impacts the amount of available money that she can spend. Same true in other departments across the county where anticipated revenues are not where they were last year. So you have to factor that in. Um, the next four drivers impact expenses. These aren't unique to Pitt County and can probably be seen across the country. Inflation is one of them. If you go to the grocery store, you see it. You know it costs more to buy the same thing than it used to. That's also true for paper, equipment, supplies, and the services that we need to run county government. Some particular inflationary impacts that are absorbed in this budget. For example, we're required by law to pay the cost of the medical examiner for an autopsy. Up until now, we used to pay $1,750 per autopsy. This year, we got the new fee schedule. It's $3,625 per autopsy. And we have to pay that. We pay um, a fee to the Juvenile Justice Center for housing um, juveniles in detention. We used to pay $135 a day for those juveniles in detention. Now we have to pay $150 per day. And all of those additional expenditures impact this budget. Jail health costs continue to increase, and the list goes on. So we're seeing overall a reduction in some revenues we relied on in the past and an increase um, in costs. We, um, with good foresight for the benefit of this community, reclassified certain public safety positions in your current fiscal year um, in the sheriff's office and with paramedics and that will have a significant impact the expense of that will have a significant impact on your budget going forward um, because emergency management and sheriff's office personnel are now just more expensive to employ our residents have spoken loud and clear through public engagement sessions that they want to see an investment in recreation and recreation is a driver in this budget um, we've created a Parks and Recreation Department that is modest, 
but is still an expenditure impact on this budget. And so are the rest of our county employees, which we'll talk about in more detail later um, in terms of driving the expenditures in this budget. We are a service-oriented government. Most <coughs> of our costs are in people. It's our collective responsibility to take care of the people who are taking care of the community, and that's going to cost us some money. So that's really just to give you some context of what we're trying to accomplish, how we went about it, and what drove some of the decisions in our balancing of this budget. So let's shift gears real quick and talk a little bit more about reappraisal. That was a big driver, and to get a little deeper into those numbers. This is a chart that just shows um, growth in the base over time from 2019 until 2024. Um, and I'm going to quote Sam Croom, who always says, people recognize the value in Pitt County. He says it all the time, and it's true. People recognize the value of being in Pitt County, and that's reflected in the growth in our tax base. You can see in 2019, our base was valued at about 12.9 million. And this year, we're valued at about 22.7 million. Of this chart, 2020 and 2024 reflect your reappraisal years, with this 2024 reappraisal year being the largest increase that I ever recall seeing. So let's get to the exact numbers just year over year. Last year, our 23-24, our current year base, was $16.7 um, billion. Um, your estimated base for 24-25 is $22.7 billion, which is about a 35.74 increase over last year. To put that in context, about 80,000 real property parcels were reviewed, and those are the notices that went in the mail that everybody received and had sticker shock on. Um, the county received of those 80,000 reappraisal notices only about 2,500 appeals. Um, about half of those are already resolved. In listening to tax paper, taxpayers who received a significantly higher tax bill over last year, you have those who feel somewhat like the gentleman who spoke in public addresses to the board, and we have a very thorough process for appeal through the tax office, informal, Board of Equalization and Review, Property Tax Commission, Court of Appeals, if you want to take it all the way, to be sure we have that right value. But the far majority of spoke, folks that I've talked to have acknowledged that their neighbors' homes have sold for amounts higher or more than what's on their tax bill, and that if they were going to sell their home, they would expect a willing buyer to pay at least that much that's in their appraisal. I think that's why we only received the appeals that we received, that number, and I think it means we hit those values about right. So what does that mean for the tax bill, right? It means that if we're going to have homes valued at market, it means we have to address the tax rate because it's your value times a rate that results in your bill, and that's what people are worried about. I've never heard anybody complain to have their net worth increase with, by doing nothing, um, but they're worried about how it's going to impact their tax bill in, the, in their pocket. And so applying the methodology that we discussed earlier, and in order to accomplish the objectives and the priorities that we've talked about, and in order to achieve balance, the theme of this budget, I'm recommending that this board adopt an almost 12 cent decrease in the property tax rate from 68.41 cents down to 56.63 cents. That's the largest tax rate decrease in the history of Pitt County government. It accompanies the largest property value increase in the history of Pitt County government, and so it goes hand in hand. So, gentlemen, um, like the one who spoke to you tonight, who are anticipating that my bill is going to double or triple, if you adjust the rate, that won't happen. I believe that we can absorb the largest tax rate decrease in Pitt County history and still meet the needs of a growing community while operating a lean county government. So what does that really mean for the homeowner? So this next slide is going to show you a practical impact of what that means. Suppose you live in an average home in Pitt County valued at $250,000 prior to the reappraisal, and that's our average home price. 
and at the 68.41 cent tax rate, you would have paid $1,710, $1,710 in ad valorem taxes. And if you have two cars, you'd probably pay an additional $410 if they were fairly decent cars, and your total tax bill would be $2,120. $2,120. Now suppose you got a reappraisal notice and you were one of the homes that went up almost $100,000 in value. And several people got notices that went up almost $100,000 in value. Um, so for this one, your typical increase according to our percentage, suppose your home went up in value to $332,500. At the proposed rate of 56.63 cents, your property tax bill would go up $173. And because personal property is appraised every year and is not subject to our four-year reappraisal process, um, that would cause your vehicle tax bill to be reduced by $50, leaving a net increase of $102 in taxes to pay for the needs in education, public safety, recreation, and the other needs in our growing community. Every property owner is going to be unique. Everyone will be affected a little bit differently. Some will pay more, some will pay less. But this is an illustration of your average home to demonstrate how we can balance the needs of a growing community while mitigating the tax burden on our residents. As one member of our budget team said, if you take that $102 and divide it monthly, that's less than the cup of coffee at Starbucks once a month. That's the impact on our residents. <coughs> Let's transition a little bit and take a little deeper dive into revenues. The process for revenue forecasting um, is fairly straightforward. We look back three to five years. We are not influenced or don't want to be skewed by the pandemic years. We determine historical trends. We consider market factors. We talk to subject matter experts and we project those future revenues. And who are those subject matter experts? They're our very own department and agency heads. It's the Pitt County Tax Team, and it's outside sources such as the School of Government and the Association of County Commissioners. Whoops. And some <coughs> items to note impacting revenues. We've already talked about Medicaid Hold Harmless, and we've talked about the Register of Deeds. We have reduced revenues in some of our human services agencies, which result in reduced expenditures. You're not drawing it down, you're not spending it, but it will affect your total revenue numbers in your budget. We continue to forecast sales tax in accordance with prior performance. We're continuing to see an increase in interest earnings and investments. Um, our investments in commercial paper of our money and uh, savings are now secured with maturity dates that go halfway through next fiscal year. So we have a great deal of confidence in the return for our investments because we're already locked into rates through six months into the next fiscal year in commercial paper. Um, so we believe that our interest earnings will continue to remain strong as a projected revenue. We also expect a modest increase in EMS collections based on the contract that this board recently approved um, to contract that out with an outside provider. So if you look at all of the revenues, they're divided as shown on this pie. And this goes back to your priorities. The percentages next to the category reflect the portion each revenue contributes to the pie. With almost a 12 cent reduction in the property tax rate, <coughs> along with the other revenues, we can balance a $396 million budget to meet the needs of Pitt County. So let's talk a little bit and shift to expenditures. The expenditure pie looks like this, with education receiving the largest slice of the pie at 18.88%, about almost $75 million going to fund education. Public safety is a close second at 17.87% of your expenditures at almost $71 million going to public safety. Human services is your close third at almost 15%, with $60 million of your budget going to human services. Those are your top three priorities in the order that this board has directed us to prioritize them. So let me go, and it goes on down the line. I want to go into a little more detail about what makes up these expenditures on the next few slides, how we started, where we ended, 
and what it includes. So your adopted budget for 23-24, um, prior to all of the budget amendments throughout the course of the year, your original number was 221378226 So a 221 million in expenditures general fund expenditures last year. And this is just within the general fund. This isn't including the pass-through funds for municipalities, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This year, requests submitted by all departments and agencies that we fund totaled $260 million. So almost $40 million more than last year. $40 million more than last year. All, for the most part, very legitimate requests. So our subject matter experts, the people we fund say, in order for me to do the services at the same level and enhance the services that I need to do for the public, is gonna cost Pitt County $40 million more than it cost you last year. Um, so we let that sink in and we continued through the process and we reviewed each request and we met with each department and funder, requester, um, to work collaboratively um, with department and agency heads, and we were able to cut out 26 million of that 40, right? So that's how we shaved. We shaved almost 30 million, 26 million dollars, shaved out of those requests to tighten the belt, to sharpen the pencil, to make county government operation as lean as we could make it, but still meet the needs of our departments. And that results in a proposed general fund expenditure of 234 million, which is a little more than 5% over last year, 5.76% over last year. So what makes up those expenditures? What makes up that 5%? And the question is, are you willing to fund these things, right? And so the first one, I wanna start with our employees. They are the lifeblood of this organization. Personnel is by far the largest portion of every county department budget because we're service oriented and because it takes people to provide those services. I sort of hope some of our employees are listening tonight and some of them may be on YouTube or on television or even here in the audience um, because I want them to hear and know that we acknowledge that Pitt County government is so fortunate to have the dedicated employees that we have. We're not perfect by any means, but as a group, our Pitt County employees have a passion for serving the public, and we often serve those when they are at their worst, when they're seeking social services, when they're in the jail, when they have a health care issue. We work hard. We support one another in accomplishing our mission to enhance the health, safety, and well-being of our community in a friendly and cost-effective manner, and we all know our mission. We strive every day to be a leader in the state and the best in the East, we celebrate our successes, we also get frustrated, and there are days that even when we bring our A game to work, we leave feeling stressed out because of the nature of the work that we do. And as a collective, we're in it for the long haul. Um, and we have to be. Immediate gratification is found much more easily in the private sector. As public servants, we accept less over the long haul to be rewarded with the impact that we make on the community and a pension after a full career. So in order to attract and retain the best public servants, this budget includes a 5% cost of living adjustment for all employees. It maintains merit pay per performance, that's a switch that we can turn on or off every year, based on your performance at either 1.2% or 2.4%. It increases retirement system contributions as required by law to assure there's sufficient funding at the end of that full career. It does not raise health insurance contributions, even though health care costs are rising. And what it does new this year is it adds longevity pay for employees who have been with us at least five years. Uh, this is to strike a balance for our younger or newer members of our workforce who are willing to stick it out for the long haul but would like some closer incentive to keep it going. So we currently offer 1.5% longevity payment, 1.5% of your salary paid at 10 years and longer. This would provide 
three quarters of a percent, 0.75 percent, or half of that, at five years. And it would continue for years five, six, seven, eight, and nine until you get to that 10 year longevity. And if you know anything about the, the um, culture of some of our younger, newer workforce, um, there is a desire for some more immediate gratification, some more money in the upfront. It's hard when you're coming out of college to think about a pension that's coming 30 years from now. So this added benefit, which is recommended in your proposed budget, um, is to provide a balance between the long hauling county government and the newer generation of workforce that we're um, engaging. And then uh, we also have added this year something new, optional pet insurance coverage. Not all of us have two-legged children. Some of us love our four-legged children. Um, this will not cost the county any money, but it will result in a group rate that will provide premium savings to our employees who choose to purchase optional pet insurance coverage. Um, and for those um, with furry friends, that's a positive thing because um, we know how expensive those costs can be, especially in this inflationary environment. Lastly, this budget adds 33 new positions for the purpose of alleviating stress due to increased volume in some work areas, enhancing services <coughs> to the public, and changing processes to work smarter. All of that together, it's my recommendation to you, will maximize our efforts to recruit and retain within our available means in this balanced budget. This slide gives you an idea of the um, greater detail on the county's contributions to our employees' retirement, life, and health insurance benefits and what we pay on behalf of all of our employees and how those rates are increasing as required by law. And this slide shows the employees' contributions confirming that there's no change in cost or coverage from last year, um, and these rates are affirmed when the budget is adopted. It also provides a voluntary <coughs> incentive program, so that if the contribution for an employee is $99, but if you participate in voluntary wellness activities, you can um, earn a discount so that you would only pay almost half that amount, or $45 a month instead of the $99. That's how it currently is, and I'm proposing that that remain the same. So what other expenditures are driving this budget? Some notable expenditures, in addition to our employees, there are some really cool things included in this proposed budget. I think are really cool things included in this proposed budget. Some of the notable, expen notable expenditures are listed here. Um, one big one is a new Parks and Recreation Department. It will have five new employees in addition to the five that we assume from Pitt County Community Schools and recommend uh, community schools and recreation and it has an operating budget that's modest under a million dollars capital items related to the community centers will shift into that department and that new team will transform the level of parks and recreation in Pitt County it's what our citizens have asked for NeoGov I don't know if any of you have heard of NeoGov this is not on here because it's expensive um, but it's on here because if you've ever applied for a job on the county website you might think it needs improving um, for a fairly minimal cost proposed in this budget for human resources, NeoGov will update that platform. It'll enable us to level up our hiring game. NeoGov is used by the state, it's used by the city of the Greenville, it's used by many, many jurisdictions across North Carolina and across the country, and it will level up our hiring game. EPNL will change the way permitting and inspections does business. It's a software program that will take us from an all paper system into the 21st century. Service to our developers will improve dramatically. We'll join Greenville and many other jurisdictions who already use the software and it'll make our processes far more efficient and user friendly than they currently are. Two areas in the detention center where we just can't mess up um, is screening contraband before it gets into the jail and rounding to check on inmates at the intervals required by law. This budget invests in a new body scanner. So if you're entering the jail, there's no need to stuff your contraband anywhere because they will find it. And it'll have a new inmate checking system so we can be sure that all of that is recorded. This state-of-the-art equipment is consistent with the level of service that's expected by our sheriff and our residents in Pitt County. And we need to invest in it. And that's my recommendation. This budget includes funds for the planning and design of a new county administration building. 
This is an investment not only in space for our workforce and a place to better serve our customers, but it will spark continued economic development in both this medical district and the downtown property along the waterfront. Failure to move forward with a new county administration building is going to leave about a quarter of a million dollars of potential tax revenues on the table lost because government, government space is occupying prime real estate. We need to get that prime real estate into the hands of private taxpayers who are committed to providing the buildings and the amenities that our community desires, pay the taxes associated with it, and we need to round up all of our county services and put it in our government complex and stop taking up the prime property in this community. Other expenditures included in this budget, we love our libraries. The Shepherd Library System needs us to contribute towards um, finishing their HVAC project this year. That's included in this budget. The Council on Aging has a very long wait list for Meals on Wheels. They've asked for a modest increase in their budget, which is included in the proposed budget. And we continue to support the arts, whose positive cultural and economic impact in Pitt County is huge. Our Clerk of Court needs to replace some chairs. Planning needs a new plotter machine for mapping, and the capital improvement projects that we discussed in January are robust. So all of that together, with co funds combined from general fund dollars, tax dollars that we collect and pass through to the municipalities, has a total budget balanced being proposed for fiscal year 24-25 at $396 million. It's an 8.13% increase over last year um, from the original budget. It is a much smaller number when compared to your revised budget based on all of your budget amendments throughout the year. Take a minute, thanks for still hanging with me, to talk about some fee changes. Um, each year during the budget, you review and make any necessary changes to your fee manual. That dictates what fees we charge the public. And we're going to discuss these fees in more detail in workshops. But the bulk of these changes um, are in public health to capture fees for services potentially provided in the dental services unit um, and uh, to provide clarity in the fees that they charge. Um, you'll see an increase in inspection fees that we'll talk about in detail in workshops tomorrow. And you'll see some changes in planning fees to address some discovered inequity, which may actually reduce some fees were indicated. And we'll talk about that tomorrow as well. All fee changes can be found on a red line version of the fee manual, which is in your notebook. We can go over all of those fees in greater detail, and there's a lot of cleanup. In animal services, for example, in the fee manual, there's a service we no longer provide, so that's stricken through and deleted. When the sheriff came for her budget conference, we pulled up the fee manual, and they hadn't been updated in a long time. They just didn't, they're not increases in the current fees, they just didn't reflect current practice. And so we're just bringing those up to current practice to make sure that document is current. All right, let's talk about education, which is your number one funding priority. Pitt County Schools is going to provide in further detail tomorrow, on Wednesday. The proposed budget for Pitt County Schools increases current expense by almost 5%, but keep listening. It covers 100% of the cost for fixed salary increases. It covers 100% of requested teacher supplements. It covers 100% of the match for five school nurses. And it provides additional funds for the school to allocate between their additional requested social workers and IT support. It maintains current capital expenditures, as been set by this board, $1 million year over year. And then what you'll see on the small print of the bottom of this slide, um, is a note about supplemental funding for school resource officers. Commissioner Colson may recall in 2022 on his initiative when he said, I want every school to have a school resource officer and if you run short on funds, the county will pay for it um, and not to exceed $1.2 million. Well, those aren't funds that I want to build into their base because they might not need it. And if you put it in the base of the school's budget, it carries over year over year over year. Um, and so um, there's a note on the bottom they have a request. <coughs> they believe there may be an overage of up to $450,000 in school resource officer funds this year because they're offset by grant funds and other funds that they receive. And so you see a note on there 
that indicates that when we get that bill next year, that we'll allocate up to $450,000 by virtue of a budget amendment. So if you add that $450,000 in, the schools will receive $3 million in new money, or a 5.89, or almost 6% increase over last year. I know that Dr. Lenker was hoping to get about $3 million additional this year is what he shared with me, and that gets him there. Also not reflected on this chart, um, as you may know, special capital projects that need grant fund matches come to you during the course of the year, and we pay for those out of restricted sales tax, and that will continue to happen. If they can leverage grant funds with a match, we'll do that and we'll add it on to this. You may also know that specially funded projects from years ago continue to roll forward in project funds year over year until those funds are spent. That's not reflected in here. So the actual number of disposable cash for their projects is greater than this number. But this number, $52.6 million, um, creates the new base that carries year over year. As I said last year, and I'll say it again, my children attended Pitt County Public Schools for high school, and when I look at the school's budget, I still wear my parent hat, right? You never grow out of that parent hat. Um, and I believe with over $52.6 million in funding, our Pitt County children will have the opportunity for an excellent education. If there's a shortfall, it's not because of our funding. This is what our, um, in a chart, demonstrates our continuing commitment to public education in this county. Um, look at this trajectory over the last 10 years and how far we have come. And that demonstrates a significant and growing commitment to Pitt County Schools. And one that as county manager and as a parent, I am super proud of. And let's talk about our community college. We'll also hear from them on Wednesday during your budget workshops. This proposed budget funds at their request an additional campus police officer with a vehicle and the related equipment for that position. They asked for one last year and we didn't fund it. They asked for two this year. This proposed budget recommends one. Like K-12, it maintains the capital expense appropriation that we allocate year over year. And it also reflects an intent to fund interior door locks in the new fiscal year from restricted sales tax um, when they are ready for that project, right? So why don't I just add it into the base? Because I have observed that sometimes we add it in the base and they're not ready for that project. And then it just adds to the base. So when they're ready for that project, here's your note that I'm going to bring it back. And we're going to have that money set aside. And if they don't get ready for that project, you won't see it but it won't artificially inflate their base for a special project year over year. And while not reflected in this chart, don't lose sight of the fact that Pitt County is funding 100% of the debt service on a $17 million new welding building for Pitt Community College. Add to that $150,000 in your economic development budget, which funds the Bulldog Promise. Over 100, sometimes up to 150 students get a full ride to Pitt Community College because of the Bulldog Promise funds in our economic development budget. Our partnership with Pitt Area Transit, where we transport community college students from their home to campus, is just another example of our strong and unwavering commitment to the community college, which remains a tremendous asset in Pitt County and in our region. And I believe this budget reflects that commitment. And here's your trend line in how we have continued to support um, Pitt Community College and what that positive trajectory looks like in terms of our financial commitment. Let's talk for a second and transition into human services. Public health. Um, we've got some public health folks with us this evening. Hats off to Wes Gray and his team. You will hear from him in a workshop tomorrow. I believe he's satisfied in large part with this proposed budget. Public health funding is very unique, with revenues that are driven by agreement addendums that come from the state. This requested budget from public health, in collaboration with the budget team, shaved off a significant number of expenditures, instilled some degree of flexibility with revenues that reduced overall numbers, and resulted in a balanced budget of $16.4 million. 
Um, these revenues and expenditures will maintain and enhance the level of services currently provided, including support for the dental services, our new STD, Sexually Transmitted Disease Express Clinic, which is a huge success, and much more that you'll hear about um, in Mr. Gray's presentation tomorrow. With health, you'll also see a comprehensive update to their fee schedule that's been approved by the Board of Health. Of this budget, only 57.38% represents county dollars, and the remainder comes from other sources of funding. Social services. Oops, sorry, that's the same slide. Sharon Rochelle and some of her team are here this evening as well. Sharon became the director about a year and a half ago, and with her knowledge and experience from other jurisdictions, she has had a tremendous impact on social services in Pitt County. But there is still a lot of work to do. Sharon has been exceedingly transparent with the Social Services Board about the issues that she's facing, and they are working together along with the State Department of Health and Human Services to address people, processes, and productivity. Failure to do so costs lives and money. I get it. I absolutely get it. DSS asked for 85 new positions this year. And you'll recall that this past October, we added 13 new positions for Medicaid unwinding and expansion last October. The average number of vacant positions for DSS over the last several years, before and during Mr. Shell's time, has been about 50. In my most recent report last week, it was down to a low of 38. Um, and Sharon continues to hire, aggressively seek to hire. Um, but that's still a lot of positions that we're funding that need to be filled. So to make a recommendation on these positions to the board, what I did was I looked at all of the vacant positions in social services and all of the newly requested positions. And if there were current vacancies for the same positions that were being requested as new positions, I did not recommend that we add those positions. If all of a type of position was full, filled, and she needed additional to meet the demands, I recommended those positions. Or if a new type of position was being recommended in order to enable a process change or a structure change, um, then I recommended those. And those are included in your proposed budget. And there are 16 of them. So for example, a recommended process fix would be to have a triage unit for income maintenance, right? Income maintenance workers, those who are doing reviews and Medicaid determinations or other eligibility determinations, have to also, while they have a productivity quota, while they're at their desk to process applications all day, they're also answering the phone. They're also taking walk <coughs> They're also processing changes. And so um, Sharon has studied. Um, and looked at other counties and Wilson County for example has a triage unit so that there's a group of people who take the walk-ins answer the phone and process the changes so that those working in the back are actually meeting their productivity requirements and not being dinged for not meeting their productivity requirements because they haven't been able to get to training or they haven't been able to get to do the work that they intended to start that day because the phone didn't stop ringing so there's funding in this budget to create a unit made up of income maintenance worker ones who can change that process. And I think that's a really positive step towards addressing some of the systemic and deeper issues that exist in the Department of Social Services. Sharon can also talk tomorrow um, when she makes her presentation about a call center and how she wants to better manage the calls that are coming in. I know many of you and I have heard complaints from folks who have difficulty getting through to the person they need to talk to at social services. Sharon has a process solution for that problem, and this funds the positions to effectuate that process. It does so in a phased approach to address staffing which, um, in DSS, which I believe is reasonable under these circumstances. 16 positions at this time. Um, and I recognize that DSS has changed significantly over the years. When I was first hired by Pitt County in 1998 and I served as the DSS attorney, I was one attorney handling all of child welfare, all of adult services, all of child support, and I also served as the assistant county attorney for all the other departments at the same time. But since that time, it's a brand new game. The volume of cases, the complexity of cases, 
the rules, the caseload standards have grown and changed tremendously so that what we knew worked in the past doesn't work now. And having started my career in Pitt County government, working so closely with social services, um, this means a lot. I think I have a unique perspective and I think this phased approach will be able to address these significant changes to get us back on track in the Department of Social Services. Sharon and her board have to ask for all that they may possibly need. This board has to appropriate what's reasonable and what is within its means. Monitor it closely and then adjust mid-course as necessary. And that's what this proposed budget funds and recommends that we do. Talk briefly about public safety. Total numbers are here. They reflect significant investment in your number two priority behind education. It's an 11.57% increase to your sheriff's office, not so much in operating. She presented a very modest increase in operating budget um, and certain special, pro special items that were critical to her operation, but most of this is tied up in people cost because it's a people-oriented service. The EMS fund is reflected here at 10.8 million and then other public safety. Um, and the um, sheriff's office includes in that number the sheriff's office, the detention center, jail health, the jail inmate coordinator, and school security. That's an aggregate total number. I want to talk a minute about the EMS district fund. EMS currently has a tax rate of 5.95 cents to provide emergency medical services throughout the county. We are not recommending a change in that rate so that we will be able to fund an increase in personnel costs, the nonprofit squads, and necessary capital investments in ambulances and equipment. And this is what those revenues look like in a little greater detail. Tax revenue would generate about 6.7 million. We collect delinquent taxes. Transports, you'll see, went from 2.8 to 3.2 based on that new contract. They'll receive a very modest Medicaid settlement. Their miscellaneous revenues and then their capital needs draw some degree from their fund balance to get to revenues of 10.8 million. Their expenditures break down as follows. 7.1 goes to the county operated squads, um, which includes um, Bethel, Pactolis, now Aiden, your Chicago Peak Time Vehicle, your Simpson Peak Time Vehicle, and your community paramedics. Um, and then we heard loud and clear and Commissioner Holloman can probably do this part of the presentation better than I can, um, that the squads desperately are seeking additional funding. And this budget, under its current structure, sufficiently, and I would say generously, funds the nonprofit squads at a significant increase than they had last year. And I qualify that by saying under the current structure. The nonprofit squads feel very strongly that this current structure serves Pitt County the best. I'm also going to acknowledge that you had public addresses to this board um, that talked about um, maybe that's not the best model, um, sharing different opinions. What I would say is this proposed budget fairly funds the current model that we have, and unless and until we're directed otherwise, this is what we've got to go with. Fire departments. Um, these, I know this is, these are small numbers, they're on page 49 in your binder. Um, of the 20 nonprofit squads, you'll see the current tax rate, the rate that they've proposed by the fire commissioners in each area. The chart reflects two squads that are recommending a rate increase, Belvoir and Gardnerville, one that is requesting our $25,000 allowance for a new fire truck, that's State and House. This chart, when you have time to review it during this week, um, shows the additional revenue that each department will receive when compared to a revenue neutral rate. And I have deferred to your appointed fire commissioners and squads and are not recommending any changes to these requests. Let's talk about our affiliates and our sustaining agencies for a minute. They eat a chunk of your budget. 
These are also included in larger print on page 51 in your binder. The, you'll see the increases to Shepherd Memorial Library for a special HVAC project that I mentioned earlier, increases requested by the Council on Aging, and modest increases requested for the arts. I'm so excited about some of the things we're doing with the arts and what Holly Garriott with our Pitt County Arts Council, you heard from her just at your other meeting, is doing to make art inclusive, available, and spread throughout this county. And she has the numbers to show the tremendous economic impact that that drives. Um, this funding mainly, other than those items, holds constant. Human resources. Thanks for bearing with me. We're almost there. These are on page 53 in your binder. I'm recommending 33 new positions of the 108 new positions that were requested. So your subject matter experts and department had said we needed 108 new positions this year. Um, I'm recommending 33, and they're listed on this slide and the next slide. They include two fully grant-funded positions in public health. That means no county dollars. They include two positions in solid waste, fully funded from the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. They include two additional floating paramedics for EMS to cover gaps in coverage at the nonprofit squads. You've heard our residents talk about the impact of those gaps, and these will have floaters that will cover those gaps. And it adds 16 DSS positions based on the methodology that I shared with you earlier. It adds an office assistant in animal services. Um, that position was requested consistently for the last three years and not included. I've included it this year based upon the increase in volume and the need for someone to be up front and answering that phone and managing other things as well. It includes a deputy register of deeds to cover both increase in passport services and real estate. Um, there are some peculiarities in the Registry of Deeds Office where those in births and death records cannot assist with passports because they're too closely related. And so there's been an increase in volume and work of both sides. As it relates to the cost of this position and your overall budget for passports, passports are currently bringing in about $97,000 a year in revenue for passports. We have one position, fully loaded cost including benefits, is about $58,000. This is a $53,000 position, half of which would go to passports. So the expenditures for passports still remain under the revenues that passports generate for Pitt County government. And then it provides assistance in real estate. It adds two positions in financial services, which are there to address process, workload, and workflow. Two positions in engineering. Five positions in parks and recreation matched with the five staff at Pitt Community Schools and Recreation since we are doubling our facilities and that's included within that new Parks and Rec budget, making a total of 33 positions recommended this budget year included within this balanced budget within that significant tax decrease. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time this evening on your capital improvement plan because nothing has changed since your meeting in January where we discussed these in very great detail at the time. Suffice it to say that this proposed budget includes significant and necessary capital improvements consistent with the direction that this board provided in January. For general government includes our annual vehicle replacement, our capital maintenance, security improvements, broadcast equipment so that folks can hear us when we televise our meetings, and funding to study and plan a Pitt County office building. For public safety, it includes capital replacements, an EMS station and design to have a model should the county be in a position to have to assume a squad that might not be in the optimal location, we will invest a small amount of money to be better ready for any future decisions. Um, it adds a significant amount of funds to finish up fit to the sheriff's new building, including her furniture. So excited, if you haven't gone past New Hope Drive recently, take a look at the new sheriff's administration building. It is amazing. On the public safety side also, police observation devices, detention center facility improvements, detention center boilers. On the education side, recurring projects that we do year over year. 
And of this big number, 17 million is the borrowing for the welding building, showing 18.1 allocated for schools, and then another one and a half million towards cultural and recreational, as we discussed in January, to pave the parking lot at the farmer's market and continue um, to address needs with our two new community centers. Environmental protection, we're continuing to allocate funds as previously directed by the board for snagging. Um, and then solid waste has asphalt concrete building repairs that we budget for every year for your convenience sites. Work at the landfill, the closed landfill. He needs a rubber tire loader, a roll of truck, a truck loader, a tractor trailer, and a yard jockey. All paid within the solid waste enterprise fund. Capital improvements total 27.3 million. And then just remember 17 million of that is the welding building. So it's in line with what you've done in the past. Remaining budget calendar. You've got budget workshops the remainder of this week from beginning at 8.30 in this room. If we need additional workshops, we'll make that available. June 4th is what you currently have set for your public hearing for citizen input on this budget. Um, and then June 17th is an alternate date to adopt if you don't adopt it following the public hearing. Your next few slides show you your agenda for tomorrow with human services and then fee discussions for Wednesday with education and for Thursday with emergency management and law enforcement. So in summary, this budget funds in accordance um, with your priorities. It, education, public safety, and human services. It is the largest tax rate decrease in Pitt County history at almost 12 cents. It maintains, that's your down arrow right there. It maintains focus. <laughs> the words are on my page and probably in your notebook, but not on my screen. It maintains focus on recruitment and retention. I believe that it meets departmental needs <coughs> and consistent with the theme. I believe it achieves balance. There it is. Um, I need to end with some acknowledgments um, to thank for their dedicated service, our tax administration office, which was so critical in projecting revenues, our county department heads and staff for telling me the real deal, telling me what they really need, why they need it, and what their priorities are, um, our IT team, um, as well as our county um, budget team, which was made up of Sam Kroom and his staff, particularly Susan Stokes, Devin Johnson, and Kelly Dixon. Um, so end with that note of thanks to our partners for preparing this proposed budget. And then if I can answer any burning questions now, I'm glad to do that. And then we can have all the time we need Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week during your workshops to delve deeper. Any questions for right now? Okay. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Manager. I know you want to get into this back coke after all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I will invite uh, Kelly Andrews up while Madam Manager is headed this way for our, she's got both public hearings. Give her a chance okay. to sit down. Catch your breath. Good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, awesome. Chairman Smith and Commissioners, and uh, I wanted to just remind you this week, May 6th through 10th, is Economic Development Week, so I have a couple of economic development projects um, for your consideration tonight, both existing industry expansion, potentially. Um, the first one on the agenda is Project Block, um, an existing industry that manufactures absorbent hygiene products. And they have plans to expand at one of their existing U.S. facilities and add two lines currently manufactured at European facilities. With demand increasing and these U European facilities at capacity, increasing transportation costs, they are considering two locations, our Greenville location as well as a facility in Ohio. In consideration of this planned expansion, which is in competition with Ohio, we would uh, we would, this would include here an investment of $26.2 million and the creation of a minimum of 25 jobs in Pitt County at or above the county's average wage. Uh, we request approval for Pitt County to serve as the applicant for an NC Commerce Building Reuse Grant 
as well as an NC Commerce 1NC fund grant which, uh, with management by the Pitt County Economic Development Department. This will include providing the 5% required local grant match for the NC Building Reuse Grant, uh, not to exceed $12,500. And in addition, uh, we would like to offer an economic development grant for Project Block in an amount equivalent to 75% of the net increase in ad valorem taxes paid by the company for a five-year period with a cap of $100,000 per year or $500,000 in total over the five-year grant period. All of these incentives will be contingent upon Project Block remaining in compliance with executed state and county incentive agreements. Therefore, I respectfully request that you move to approve the economic development grant, the 5% local match for the building reuse grant match, and authorize uh, as uh, excuse me as um, and authorize the chair to execute an economic development agreement sign a resolution as well as uh, allow the Pitt County Economic Development Department to complete any required North Carolina commerce documentation for state incentives. Okay, we will open the public hearing. And is there anyone that would like to speak in favor? Anybody that would like to speak against it? I'll close the public hearing. It's a pleasure to board. I'd like to move acceptance. We have a motion and a second. second move forward with this project. Okay. Next project, Kelly. Thank you. Also for your consideration is Project Spotless, another existing industry. Um, this company is in the chemical and cleaning industry, and they're exploring an expansion um, to a new facility, um, an existing building in Pitt County, actually in Greenville. Um, to move, the, uh, to, to move their existing business, um, or they may move the business to an existing building in New Jersey. Um, <clears throat> so in consideration of this project's planned expansion, we, which includes the investment of $10.5 million, the creation of 21 new jobs with an average salary of just under $60,000, which is almost $10,000 above our average salary, as well, as the retention of approximately 100 local jobs that we would lose if they moved to New Jersey. We recommend an economic development grant in an amount equivalent to 75%, excuse me, 75% of the net increase in ad valorem taxes paid by the company for a five-year period with a cap of $50,000 per year or $250,000 in total over the five years. This, again, will be contingent upon the project remaining in compliance with executed county incentive agreements as well as state incentive agreements. I have a question. Yes. Okay. Uh, did I understand you correct to say that if we do this, they will stay here? If they do this expansion here, yes, this will re retain the 100 jobs that we already have and create another 21. And passing this sort of like seals it or um, yep, towards it? it? It is the offer that we're making um, as they consider both locations, okay. the New Jersey location. So we're sweetening the, the deal for them to stay here, which again, not only um, puts new money in our tax base, um, but creates 21 new jobs and retains 100 jobs. And they won't go to Ohio. That's correct. Or New Jersey. Yes. I like that. <laughs> oh, oh, you ain't ready for it though. Any so, other questions? I'm sorry, Kelly. No, I was just, if you want me to just read our request for the sure. motion that yes, way you please. can just vote um, our, so a request that you move to approve the economic development a grant uh, as described for project spotless and authorize the chair to execute an economic development agreement sign a resolution and authorize Pitt County Economic Development to uh, complete all required documentation for NC Commerce and any other state incentives okay I will open up the public hearing anyone that would like to speak in favor of this project Anyone that would like to speak against? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. What's the pleasure to board? Approve. So I got a motion to approve and a second. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you very much. Yes. All right, we will move to items for report and back to you, Madam Manager. More of me. I'll make this quick. Your next meeting dates? May 7th to 9th at 8.30 in the morning for budget workshops in this room. May 20th is your second meeting in May. 
June 3rd is your first in June, and June 4th will be your public hearing on the budget. Also, a date to note, May 14th, 2024, Elections is working hard to put out the second primary election for two contested races at the state level. North Carolina Department of Public Safety Awards. Um, what an honor for Pitt County to have received several awards for safety from the North Carolina Department of Labor. And I'd like to recognize those departments that had um, recognitions this year. There was a Certificate of Safety Achievement to Pitt County Detention Center, a silver award for their sixth consecutive year. Don't get any money. No money, <laughs> just no injuries. <laughs> um, for um, animal services, they received a gold award for their fourth consecutive year. For Department of Social Services, they received a gold award for the first time. For Pitt County's general government, we received a gold award for the sixth consecutive year. For Pitt County buildings and grounds, they received a silver award for the first time. And for public health, they received a gold award for the first time. And finally, for the sheriff's office, they received a silver award for the first time. So this um, continues to demonstrate and affirm the emphasis that our employees place on safety in carrying out their work. And it's an honor to be recognized by the Department of Labor. There was a reception um, that was sponsored by the Pitt Greenville Chamber of Commerce that I think some of you may have attended where those recipients received those awards in person. And I just wanted to confirm it at this meeting. Next announcement is Boviet Solar. For those who were there, it was a pretty exciting event last Friday, April 26th, or two Fridays ago. Boviet Solar um, was the company who has chosen Pitt County for their first United States manufacturing location. They will invest $294 million in investment in Pitt County. They will create 908 new jobs, all above our average um, wage. And on your screen, um, you can see Commissioner Ann Floyd Huggins made the remarks on behalf of the county that day in the chair and vice chair's absence. Um, the governor came, the deputy secretary of commerce was there, um, the CEO and president of the company from Taiwan, um, as well as other members of our team. And it was a really special day. I think it reflects the momentum that we are creating in economic development and we hope to have more. Well, I think that's great. I'm about ready to step down from as commissioner. Maybe they'll hire a broken down North Vietnamese linguist from years past. <laughs> they just might need one. <laughs> and then the last item for report is just a reminder on our Litter Free for You and Me campaign. If you watch WITN or listen to the radio, you have heard a significant push um, because, as we do every year since initiated during the chairman chairwomanship of Mary Perkins Williams. Um, we are very proactive in litter enforcement. And so um, our logo you will see throughout the county. You'll hear radio ads, TV commercials. And I thought it was fun to show a picture of our new um, solid waste enforcement truck decaling with our litter free for you and me sticker on it, the number to call for illegal dumping. Um, and we welcomed Jason Randall um, who serves in that role as both Deputy Director of Solid Waste and Environmental Enforcement Officer. And so we're thrilled for that campaign to continue. And that's all that I have. Thank you, Madam Manager. We will move to items for consent. Um, so we'll move. Your motion for that. Second. A motion and a second. And moving on to items for decision, uh, budget amendment for the Animal Control Services Agreement with the Town of Aden. Chad, we'll have you up. Good evening, everyone. I'm just a small piece of that pie, but I'm doing my best to bring in revenue and create partnerships for the Animal <laughs> Services Division. <laughs> And with that, you might remember um, about this time last year, we created a new partnership uh, with the town of Farmville. So this, this mirrors that uh, partnership over with Aiden that we are, uh, or it's our intent to provide exclusive animal services for the municipality of Aiden uh, as well. Uh, in return, um, they have agreed to um, 
or in exchange, the town agrees to compensate us for those services to create revenue uh, for animal services uh, and whatnot. And so if there's no further questions, it would be my recommendation that we move to enter into that agreement with the town of Aiden so that we can streamline services to all the citizens of Pitt County. Move to approve. Okay. Got a motion. I hear a second. Second. Okay. Let's vote. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next up, appointment to the Human Relations Commission, my manager. It's being recommended that you nominate Lucas Ciejo to a term to serve on the Human Relations Commission as the Grifton representative for a term expiring May 6, 2027. Okay. It's a pleasure to, to board. Got a motion to approve. I hear a second. Okay. Got a motion and a second. And last item for decision, appointment and reappointment to the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. It is being recommended that you nominate Anaya Lane to fill the seat with the attribute age 21 or under age group. Nominate Patrick Lenz to fill the Board of Commissioners appointee seat. And move Marlo Blake's seat to the Department of Public Safety, where she is now associated on the Pitt County Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. So moved. We've got a motion here, second. Second. Okay. Mr. McGlone. You'll, you'll have been taken. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, moving on. Commissioner comments. I'll start to my right. Commissioner Ward. No comment. Thank you. Commissioner Holloman. No comment. Commissioner Nunnally. No comment. Well, I'm quick on that side. Commissioner <laughs> Colson. Maybe they'll follow suit on that side. <laughs> Commissioner Floyd Huggins. I just want to say that uh, it was an honor to represent the county uh, in the uh, the Soviet uh, announcement. It was a big deal. And Thank Pitt you county for being there. Pitt County did well. Looked great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner White. No comment. Commissioner McLaughlin. I just want to thank our manager for such an uh, outstanding budget and uh, something that I think the citizens of Pitt County can embrace and uh, certainly the employees of the county can embrace in terms of uh, the uh, raise that was announced uh, uh, for them. Our employees is the greatest asset uh, for the county, so uh, Ms. 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 Manager, I want to thank you for that. Commissioner Perkin Williams. I'd like to announce that the Human Relations Council will be having a listening session at Belvoir Free Will Baptist Church tomorrow night beginning at 6 o'clock um, on Highway 33 West. It's an inclusive listening session and everyone is invited to attend as much as we can hold as the fire accepts, just in case we're not going to beat the firemen out. They aren't going to keep us out. But we do want to hear your opinion about what stands good with Pitt County and you, and what can we do to make it better. I think that's basically what it is, because I'm not reading it. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to uh, thank county staff. A lot of hard work that goes into these budgets. I know we still have a a couple of days, but thank you for your work um, and everything that you do each and every day. I want to also thank all of our volunteers on all of our boards. There's a lot of hard work that goes into those boards. I want to uh, especially thank Russell. Uh, that Equalization and Tax Board is extremely busy this year. If I'd known we were going to be that busy, I would have put uh, Commissioner Perkin Williams on that board <laughs> instead of myself. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I wasn't thinking ahead of time, but I want to want to thank Russell. There's a lot of work that goes on, in the, on with that board, and there's a lot of work in the coming weeks with that board. With that being said, I think we have a closed session. You need Mr. Chair, if I may read the ground. Yes, please. It has been suggested this body go into closed session under the following grounds: one, to discuss a personnel matter under North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11a6. Two, to consult an attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve attorney-client privilege under North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11a3, which privilege is hereby acknowledged. And for the board's reference, that was added for this motion. There was some, something that came to my attention today that I'd like to discuss with the board. 
and three, finally, to prevent the disclosure of information that is not considered a public record under the North Carolina Jail Statute 143.318. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to go motion on the closed session. Motion to go I have a motion and a second. Sir. Sir. second. If you would, please vote. Okay, we're back in the open session. Can I make the motion to go home? Not we yet. got one motion with the minutes oh. before that. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to approve the closed session minutes from April the 15th. Okay, thank you. Second. We have a motion. I hear it a second. Yes, Commissioner Floyd Huggins would vote, and then we'll entertain that motion to uh, go home. That's it. Okay, second. we got a motion. I hear a second. Second. Okay. Is it pink black outside? Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, Mary. Mm -hmm. oh. Mary, you want right. to go home? Commissioner Ward. Ben Ward. Commissioner Ward. Ben, you got to hit the button. Are you button. trying to stay tonight, Ben? I did. <laughs> I've got one more thing to say. Would y'all sit down, please? I'm, no, I don't. <laughs> She's choking. She